welcome back to my channel guys this is creative rentals i have a well i actually have three accent walls that i'm going to be doing today i'm going to be using some three and a half inch by five eight stick mdf i'll show you guys how i laid out the walls how i came up with those measurements how i chalk lined them and how i'm prepping my wall to receive this mdf i'll show you guys the full process how to do this whether it's at your own house or someone or a client and you need to get this job done how to do it efficiently so an important thing that you guys are going to have to know is that anytime you're laying out any type of um, wainscoting or accent wall whatever it is you're putting on a wall you want to make sure that everything all your boxes are relatively the same size you know if you have a box that's maybe like an inch bigger or a half inch bigger than than the one beside it the average eye is not going to see that so there's different ways that people can go about to lay out walls my wall in particular that i'm doing it's seven feet by 13 feet so i'm gonna change the feet into inches and i'm gonna do that for both sides so my seven feet in inches is going to be 84 inches okay because i multiplied that by 12. and my 13 feet i'm going to multiply that by 12 and that will also give me an answer in inches as well which is 156. so i have four rows by six rows now i determined this just based on looking at you know what i would want overall instead of like three i felt three rows is not going to be um enough for the wall i think they would be too big and you know five i i felt would crowd it so that's why i decided to go with four so the material that i'm using on each side of the wall is three and a half inches First, I'm going to take my my overall <clears throat> my overall uh, width of the wall, the seven feet that we calculated into inches, which is 84. I'm going to take that 84 and I'm going to subtract my two pieces on each end. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. My three and a half and my three and a half is going to give me seven inches. I'm going to subtract that seven inches from the 84 my total length so now that i subtracted my seven from my 84 it left me with 77 that's 77 so if we pretended that that three and a half <clears throat> piece is on each side of the wall it's left me with 77 inside of those two pieces now if we look at my four rows you'll notice that we have three dividers so three pieces in between each one of those so for my four rows i have one two three pieces in between each of my rows those 3.5 pieces those three and a half inches i'm gonna add them together or just gonna multiply them by three because we want to get rid of those three pieces to give us our dimension that we want to divide our boxes by so now that i have my 77 i'm gonna subtract those three pieces separating my boxes which is 10.5 and it's going to give me 66.5 inches left over we are left over with 66.5 inches 
This 66.5 inches, I'm going to divide it by how many boxes because I want to say we want each of these boxes to be equal. So that's why I'm going to divide that by the number of boxes. And for here, as you can see, I have one, two, three, four boxes. So that's why I'm dividing four boxes by that length of 66.5. Once I divided my 66.5 divided by four boxes, I'm left over with 16.625. 0.625 is equal to five eighths. So my overall answer was 16 and five eighths. So now I laid out my wall. So what I did is I put my three and a half on one wall, measured over 16 uh, and five eighths then I had three and a half again spacer measured over 16 five eighths so I just did that until I laid out the full wall and once I ran the chalk lines I was visually able to see what it would look like Okay, so you'll notice I removed the quarter round that was in this corner and the reason I did that is because this piece coming down there would be a quarter round here and I wanted to get it nice and tight to there so what I'm gonna do is once I remove that I saw that there's a big gap here so I want to actually put a piece of MDF I'm gonna use the same uh, thickness that I'm using for the wall I'm actually just gonna create a base coming all the way around the stair risers and I'll be able to butt this piece up into here and it will be nice and nice and flush and clean so before I do that I need to find out my angles because as you see it comes straight then it slopes then it drops for this corner I want to find out this angle an easy way to do this is when you bring your two pieces here, just get some scrap, some scrap pieces, same thickness, and you just mark up the wall along it. Take this one, bring it to there, to the corner where, where the two points are gonna meet. Mark it there. Now you can see where both pieces are gonna run. So we wanna have our piece cut on this angle and we want to have our piece cut on this angle so what I could do is I could just bring this to this point that ends right and I know this line is running to this corner right here so I can literally just bring my ruler to this point and bring it to the corner, top right hand corner and draw a line, okay? And bring it to the... So you could cut one piece first, so cut this off and if you wanted you could even leave that there put it up on your thing and once this piece is cut you could even mark it and cut it like that. I went ahead and I cut these on the marks that I had and they pretty much align perfectly. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna glue them and then I'll fire them in and we'll leave it like that. Now I'll be able to butt the next pieces right up into them. I'll find the angles for these, these going up and then I'll continue in working my way going up. I'm gonna make sure I do all the wall verticals first and then I'll shine up my laser 
and get a clean light going all the way around the room, then I'll do the ones going horizontally. I will be putting a piece that's going to be going down here like this. But as you can see, this is this rounded piece right here is stopping me. So I just created like, just use a piece of scarf or a little scrap piece and uh, just drew it out. So I want to show you guys um, basically what I did. I would actually use to find these angles coming up the stairs. So I personally use a sliding T bevel. This is what helps me to find any angles that I need. It can rotate and what I usually do is I'll just butt it up, right? Make sure it's flat, and then I'll just push it out to the angle that I need. So I basically just did that, butted up my piece here. I wanted a continuous piece instead of having like two different pieces because I want this baseboard to be level with the connecting one. Um, what you could do, and what you should do, is um, just make a mark on the top of your piece. Just put another one like this, make a mark on the top, and then where this, just for example, just say if this was a line coming down here, wherever these two pieces intersect, that's, that's your mark that you want. I would just take this angle, right? And how I would take that angle is, I'll take my bevel, butt it up, and that angle right there, I'd convert it onto my sliding T bevel. Like that. And then I'd make that cut, and I'd literally just work my way up. And then once I came to the top, I just marked the top of this piece, I marked the top of this piece, found the center to here. I took my sliding T bevel, put it here. This gave me this angle. And that's how I have it. So we wanna make sure everything is, is completely flush and level when we're doing this kind of finishing work. Cause you don't really want the eyes to be noticing things when you're coming up the stairs. And then now I'm gonna put in this bottom piece right here. I'll glue it, fasten it. And then I will be able to put in that top piece. So what I'm actually doing here is when I have my spacer, which is 14 inches, I'm gonna butt it up on here. Here's my mark, okay, right here. I'm gonna sh use my laser level. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna line it up on that mark. That's gonna shoot me straight up the wall to my mark. I could see it, it's probably gonna be really dim for you guys, but uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. So I have my mark up there. What I'm actually gonna do 
This is how I've been getting all my measurements is I've been using this DeWalt and basically it reads the distance between two points with the red laser. So I'm just gonna line up my bottom. Oh, my mark right here. I'm gonna shoot my mark and I'm gonna take a distance right on that red line that I have on the top. 9, 1, 14, 7, 8. And then what I'll do to get this angle, because this is obviously on a slope, I'll take my sliding T bevel, I line it up on here, and then I will get that angle that I need, which is right there. And then I'll basically just copy this mark to the bottom of the piece that I cut. So I'm going to remove the quarter round, the exact same process that I did on the left side of the stairs. Once I have all my verticals in, I'm starting to put in my horizontal pieces. I'm just working my way around. So as you notice, the laser's on the right hand side of the wall and the left side, just so everything is staying proportionate and the, the lines, all the lines are the exact same level across the stairway. Now it's just to fill all the holes and the gaps and then we can move on to the next step. However, I did fill in my squares with hardboard and I am putting a decorative molding inside of my squares. I just felt like I wanted a, a, a consistent texture inside the walls and I'm using Gorilla Glue to stick the, the, eighth, the 1 8 hardboard to the wall. And these trim that I'm actually using um i'm gluing them and i'm using a 23 gauge uh nail gun because the holes are very very small as opposed to a 16 gauge and these decorative panel they are solid wood so i felt the 23 gauge would at least help me to um hide the holes because they're so fine once I get all my panels in, I will go around and fill all the little holes and the lines in between each of the panels. And to be honest with you, it it's very tedious. It takes a lot of time. Uh, when you're doing this kind of work, you really don't want to skip steps or get lazy with it because these lines and these holes they will show if you don't do a good job in filling them and if you over sand your lines they will be seen i also am gonna caulk the inside of the panels and the outside and here we have the finished product I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. Um, I don't have any regrets. Everything is, it's, it's just, it's beautiful. When you stand in this hallway and you look around, 
and you feel the before it felt and the after it felt it's it's like night and day i do have a video that i did in the same stairwell where i actually removed the popcorn ceiling in this area and i feel like that and and the chandelier everything just complements each other if you have a um a room at home that you just feel just you want to add life to it i highly recommend doing an accent wall you can't go wrong with it you will not be disappointed i just strongly encourage that you take your time in doing the finishing and making sure that the overall look is is going to be spectacular because that's what you want you you want to go for the aesthetics you want to go for the nice look if you haven't subscribed to my channel already subscribe give me a thumbs up hit me with a like and i will continually try to produce more of these videos for the everyday homeowner to to add a little more to their home and to give a little insight to actually help you guys accomplish what exactly it is that you're trying to do.